Okay, so uh, this is the second video of my, I don't feel like doing anything or it's been a super long time and I have no idea what to do. So I'm just gonna do 10 minutes series. <laughs> so this is an approach that I recommend to uh, clients and participants and I do it myself when I am really not feeling like I have the energy or motivation, um, but I want to have done something. Um, I break it down into just really small segments of fitness and it's way more approachable. Um, sometimes after 10 minutes, you actually feel like, okay, I've got the ball rolling. I can do more. Um, and sometimes you really don't, you just want to stop, but you've done 10 minutes. You've done what you set it to do. So if that's enough, stop there. So the first, the two moves that we are going to do in this one are push-ups and hamstring curls. So you need a ball for hamstring curls. Um, alternatives to hamstring curl, I'm not gonna demonstrate the alternatives, but if you, you need other options, glute bridge could be one of them. Hamstring slides on the floor could also be one, but you should know that hamstring slides on the floor are, for most people, way harder than on a ball. A ball rolls easily, whereas if you're sliding on something, there's a good chance there's more friction and it's harder to make that happen. So if you're turning to those because you don't have a ball, they might be super tough for you. So uh, push-ups and hamstring curls. That's it, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And we are gonna do five rounds and that'll be it. And maybe that's enough, or maybe that is just enough to get you motivated and you feel like doing more. Either way, it's good. I'm gonna start with push-ups. If you are not able to do push-ups on the floor from your toes, I recommend doing them on a surface, up on a counter, the coffee table, a chair, elevate. Go. So make sure your elbows are pointing back slightly like an arrow. Squeeze your legs, tuck your pelvis a little bit, lower your body towards the floor and push away. Trying to keep your body really straight, like a plank. Consider this a plank that you bend your elbows. So it's a moving plank, down and up. Okay. Rest, 30 seconds rest. Um, that might seem long. <laughs> if it does, try to work harder in that, in the working interval, the first 30 seconds. Do as much as you can in that interval. If you're able to fill up 30 seconds of push-ups and that's not too much, try a harder variation. Make the push-up more challenging. All right, hamstring curls, heels on the ball, arms out to the side, lift your bum, tuck your pelvis and squeeze your bum. Roll the ball in and try to drive your hips up at the same time. Roll out, do it again. So think about lifting your hips as the ball comes in. If you can't, that's okay, lift separately. So maybe you're rolling in and then lifting. Good, rest. That's one round up. Okay. Round two, we're back to push-ups. Now, don't feel like you have to fill up the time. If you are doing as many as you can, and it doesn't matter if it's three or five or 12, if you have done all you can do, just take extra rest. The goal here is to get stronger, not to burn ourselves out. We're not trying to burn calories, we're trying to get stronger. Go. So careful of the width of your hands. Sometimes I set up too close or too wide and it makes a huge difference. Now there, there are variations, right? There's a close grip variation, there's a wide grip variation. But if this is a new movement and you're just building up strength, pay attention to the width. Good, rest. If you are a beginner in push-ups and you accidentally go too wide, it's going to screw you up. If you go too close, it could screw you up. Both of those could also potentially hurt you if you are a beginner at push-ups. So just pay attention to what feels the strongest, what feels the best, and do that every time as you increase your strength. Back to the ball. <laughs> Go. So hips go high, roll in, lift your bum up, 
and then roll out. Now try to do this controlled, <laughs> especially rolling out. Don't let the ball roll out really fast. Slower is almost always better. If you need to separate the movements, you can roll in and then lift, but work towards lifting your hips at the same time. Ooh, that's two rounds done. So I was saying at the start, if you are unable to do push-ups from your toes, the best way is to get up on a surface. So put your hands on the coffee table, on the chair or two chairs, on the kitchen counter, on the bathtub, wherever. Stairs are great. And then slowly lower the surface that you're using as you get stronger. Go. Push-ups from the knees. They're okay for building muscle <laughs> in high numbers, but they are not a great way to build up strength to work up to push-ups on your toes. A much better way to build up your strength is to do them from your toes, but with your hands elevated. Rest, back to the ball. So an alternative, uh, if you're not able to do hamstring curls and if it feels like your hamstrings are going to explode and you're actually worried they really might, do glute bridges. Glute bridges are with your feet on the floor, mostly under your knees, and then lift your bum up and down. That's a really great place to start. Go. And then if glute bridges feel too easy, but hamstring curl is still too tough, do glute bridges, but with your feet up on something, like on the couch or the coffee table. That's gonna isolate, it's gonna Hit the hamstrings a little bit more, making them stronger, and then eventually working your way up to the ball. Good. Final rest. I have lost track. We've done three rounds. Two to go. If you want to progress, Pay attention to the numbers, count how many you're doing in the 30 seconds. And next week, when you do it again, try to get just one or two more. It doesn't have to be one or two every interval, one or two overall. Go, you wanna just slowly increase. So let's say today I get eight each round. Next week, I wanna try getting nine, maybe round one and two. And then drop it down if I need to. Bro. Back down to eight if I need to. Rest. Back to the ball. Okay. So these movements cover a lot of muscles, even though we're only doing two movements. Push-ups get chest, shoulders, triceps in that single movement. Hamstring curls are hamstrings, glutes, and a little bit of calves. Go. Hamstrings, glutes, calves, and into your lower back. But if you're feeling your lower back, that's not good. Tuck your pelvis more. So scoop your butt under more. Pull your ribs in, pull your abdomen in. Oh, good, good, rest. Now there is just one more round. Last time. Watch what you do with your neck when you're doing a push-up. When you're doing pretty much everything, but especially push-up, it's very easy to move your neck, bob your head up and down. Don't do that. You want to look above where your hands are, so not down at your toes. Look up a little and keep it still. Go. 
So chin up a little, not looking at the wall, but just up slightly. If your elbows are wide to the side, if you're making a T, tuck them back a little more. Take the time, correct that. It's gonna help your shoulders, it's gonna help your form in the long run. Rest. One more time, hamstring curls. There is actually an option to do glute bridge with the ball. And I didn't think of this. So I was saying you could do glute bridge with your feet up on a coffee table or a couch. You could actually just do glute bridge with the ball as a step towards hamstring curl. So I'm going to start with a couple reps of glute bridge and then I'll start rolling the ball in and out again. Go. So if you want to use the ball for glute bridge, knees bent, hips bent, lift up and back down. So you're not rolling the ball in and out. This is a great step towards hamstring curls. Really drive the hips up, tuck your pelvis, pull your belly button in. Good. Done, rest, just 10 minutes. But if you feel like doing more now, that's fantastic. But if you don't, you're actually done your workout.